some Pennsylvanians here, which is nice. Yeah, so Oregon. I forgot. Do you know Heather Lister? It sounds familiar. Okay. I feel like we follow each other on Twitter. Yeah, she's a she's a Pennsylvanian. Okay, nice. Oh. Look as you can hear yourself now on the on YouTube. At least I can. All right, so we're live. We're on YouTube. We're here live. Uh hello. This is Colleen from Makey Makey, and we have Mike, uh, Michael Carroll here from Scrappy Circuits, and we have Tom Hick, also from Makey Makey. We are doing these live Let's Invent um, shows every Tuesday. Oh, no, am I on the wrong internet? That's okay. Uh, every Tuesday, and um, someone's got their hand up. If everyone in the chat, hello, all of you, we've got some people um, from Canada, Puerto Rico, and uh, sorry, my te I, my Texas. I try to get the the right what you might call it, and then I can't. If you want to say hi and where you're from, you can. And we are going to talk with Michael today about Scrappy Circuits um, because I feel like I should let you do your own intro, but I'm going to do a little bit. We have someone from Wales and Arizona and Switzerland, people from everywhere. Love it. Love I know it. it's really amazing uh oh, even man. scotland scotland we we're doing we're really global today so i'm pretty impressed with this uh we're doing scrappy circuits so yesterday tom had asked me where he could get an led so i'm going to put you on the spot for this because like a lot of people we want people to do a paper circuit and a lot of people may not have an led laying around their house and then i said or do they right because i have these silly tea lights from the dollar store. I don't know how many other people have these silly tea lights from the dollar store, but I'm sure there's other things that Mr. Michael Carroll would know that we could hack into and find an LED. So yesterday I made a really short video on, on getting the LED in the coin cell battery out of a, uh, a tea light so that you could make your own paper circuit. And there it is, ta-da. I guess I left it on all night, so it's dead now. <laughs> anyway, uh, Michael is, really cool because he does scrappy circuits and that just means that he finds ways to make circuits out of everyday stuff out of cardboard and office supplies and so you're a little bit my hero that way because i've been working on that too for us so why don't you tell us your how you got started doing that yeah well I, we both kind of come from the same background which is education which is if you're in that teacher mentality you're looking for fun engaging assignments and projects for your students but you're not trying to find something that's $5 a student because then you multiply that across your class of 2025 and it's pretty expensive. So I've always been uh, kind of interested in maker projects that are cheap and use office supplies and things that you can buy in bulk and cardboard. And then a friend of mine, um, Chris Connors and I, we were messing around one time and we kind of came up with this whole system of taking apart an LED tea light which they're nice because they're sold at dollar stores. They're usually two for a dollar. Dollar stores are pretty prevalent, a lot more prevalent than Radio Shacks and other similar places. Radio um, so Shack. People, I know, rest in peace. <laughs> Pour a little my coffee in for them. Um, so you can go, you can buy them and take them apart and then kind of start building your own, as uh, Jay Silver always uses the term invention literacy, which I love. You can start kind of building your own kit for learning how to invent and how to hook up you know a simple circuit with your switches and start controlling it inventing it kind of like uh what makey makey does and there's a nice crossover between makey makey too because a lot of the switches can be used as makey makey switches yeah. yeah so um do you do you have some that you're going to show us and share or do you have other things besides tea lights that we can still leds out of that i can't think of at the moment like do you have a ton of things you can think of like i've always hacked uh yeah i think i got started in the maker movement by hacking a toothbrush to get a motor out to make a scribble bot like that is okay like my first maker project that i got obsessed with and then went out to the dollar store and bought all the electric toothbrushes and took all the motors out um because they have that concentric weight already on the edge of them so they'll they make a good scribble bot what else can we steal leds from you know, I go to the dollar store all the time and I, nothing's yeah. better than a tea light just because 
I feel like some was, things have LEDs, some things don't, but you're getting two for a dollar and you're getting the batteries too. And my local dollar yeah. store, which is funny, they sell single three volt batteries for a dollar or you can buy a two pack of LED. Yeah, or you can buy a two light. pack of LED lights with the LED and the three volt battery for a dollar. So a lot more bang yeah. for the buck that way. Yeah, and you get, you get a switch, but I don't know if you could really reuse it. Yeah, once you pop it out, it's just kind of a punk of plastic. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically here, the whole kind of process is, and people get stuck on this a little bit, you just take out the battery, so open the battery cavity, mm -hmm. keep doing that. Obviously I don't have the right tools here, but I usually use a pen or something, just pop that battery out. And then you have your three volts, and then kind of with a pen or pencil, if you just dig in, you can usually pop these guys open. And then when you pop yeah. them open, there's your LED. Your LED. And the best part, really the best part, whenever I do this with students, I always have them make the little LED throwy and, yeah. and hook their LED back up with the three volt. And just, it's that whole idea of everything we use is like a magical device now. It's like a black box that can call people and FaceTime and, and this kind of, you take off that black box and you realize how very, very simple this invention is and how you can very easily recreate it and but better remix it which is fun yeah awesome so so the scratch <clears throat> oh, sorry tom yeah i was gonna say uh can you help us understand um like i'm just thinking logistics uh um are you buying these like one per student or like at the beginning of the school year um are you buying them in bulk or are you, is this is this a um, like? Are you thinking? Well, with this project, I usually need one and a half uh, tea lights per student because sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I've heard a lot of different ways. Like, if you're a family at home right now and you're quarantined, the best thing probably would be to either hop on Amazon and buy them in bulk for a better price, or just you know search the junk drawers until you find one. Um, mm -hmm. I have friends that do this as a lesson and they'll buy all the parts separate. So they buy a bag of LEDs and they buy three volt batteries separately. Um, you know, I have a friend who does it with first graders. So because that age group that he's not really comfortable with them taking apart everything. So he does it that way. I buy boxes of hundreds of the LED candles at once and do it that way. So everyone kind of does their their own thing. But the main idea is you get the LED and the three volt battery. And then I'm going to show you the bricks. So with those parts, you can start to build what we call the core bricks. So you have your battery. Oh, hold on. Ooh. It's asking me to install some software. You have your battery <laughs> brick here. So very simple, just your three volt battery with three binder clips. This side is your positive. This side is your negative. And then this one doesn't really perform a uh, part of the circuit. It just holds everything together. And then you have your LED. This is a separate LED that I grabbed. That's why it's green. And you have your short leg and your long leg, your positive and negative. Now and wait, slow down because uh, you have people who are first time makey makey users here. So put the battery holder back up and let's explain what's going to happen in a minute, just in case so they know so that you're using these binder clips almost like an alligator clip. You're extending the flow of electrons with the binder clips. So your kids are gonna be able to use the alligator clips from your Makey Makey kit if you have one and hook to that to make the LED light up. Right, so just it's and kind of just is, showing them, yeah, the magic behind it, yeah. So the battery starts off like this. So you just have your two binder clips and sometimes kids even need help with the binder clips. You just kind of squeeze them and pop them on and always flap one arm down, flap the other arm on top, and then use the third binder clip from the top just to hold it yeah. all together. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then that, that's going to work the same way that it was working inside the LED tea light. But now your kids are going to be able to see the magic, right? That's the point of doing this. So mm -hmm. like slowing it down for them. 
And the other thing like, is, Michael, is that you, uh, you're you not building these for the students. They take apart the tea lights, cut out the cardboard, do all of this, the building part. Yeah. One of my favorite, when I talk to an educator that makes these with students, one of my favorite comments to hear is when they talk about how it's not really that reliable. And I love hearing that because you know, it's a process where you have to kind of troubleshoot it and make it and kids are going to go through a moment of frustration, but everything is is simple and there's a lot of support on our website. I made a little sign, scrappycircuits.com. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of helpful guides there on how to kind of, um, you know, troubleshoot some of the common errors and so on. But yeah, the idea is that the kids make this themselves and kind of take that thing that they're buying, take it apart and then remix it in their own way. And then, you know, once you have the five core bricks, there's a whole bunch of other bricks you can make and kind of keep inventing and, uh, and even invent your own bricks and so on. Pull the, um, show us the LED brick again, because I want to talk about how that LED brick is really the same as this paper circuit I built, right? So like, this is my really scrappy circuit from yesterday. Although I guess we can't see them at the same time because we can't both talk and see them. But uh, uh, so say something, Michael, because it's only going to look at me okay. when I'm talking. Actually, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll spotlight your video so we can look at it. We can stare at it. So when we're looking at, can I draw on it? It's too bad I can't draw on it. When we're looking at this, he's just got the LED leg pulling the electrons through to that binder clip because it's metal, right? So then we can hook mm -hmm. our alligator clips, uh, the positive and the negative to the battery holder. And then the kids are gonna see how the electrons will flow in that circuit. I like to think of the circuit as a circle, so. Yeah, and yeah. it's gonna take apart, easy to reassemble. And it's just the LED with the, the legs kind of spread apart placed on a piece of cardboard. This, sometimes I recommend adding a little bit of tin foil. Tin foil is kind of like grease for scrappy circuits. Yeah. If you add a little <laughs> tin foil under the binder clips where it connects to the LED legs, that, oh, yeah. that helps uh, give you a little stronger connection. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to get mine to work. Mine isn't working because my LED legs broke. So those little, those little LED legs are very breakable. Yeah, yeah. So I have my alligator clips and I'm gonna hook up the battery real quick. So there we go, we have the battery yeah. the alligator clips. They're different shades of green, lots of green going on right here. <laughs> and then my LED is lit up. That's great. So Do you ever get circuit. Do you get green LEDs ever from tea lights or is it always just white? It's usually white. There are a lot of different, I brought a few. You can get the uh, like star tea lights and colored ones. And I, I think I have a Santa Claus, oh, a snowman one. So you can get different varieties, but the light inside is usually like yellow, white-ish. Um, sometimes you can get the ones that will like kind of change colors like our go through the whole rainbow, but rarely do I find like green ones or blue ones or red ones or one specific color. So can you show us some of the other core bricks? Yeah, so there's five core bricks. Right now we have two. The other three are switches. So this one, very, very simple, is two binder clips, just clipped to the side of a piece of cardboard. And this one is called the binder clip switch. And it is a toggle switch. So when you have one arm down like that and you pop the other one down, it's on. So right now, electricity will go from this binder clip through the arm to the other binder clip and keep going. And then when you toggle it up, it's off. So this is going to be similar to a light switch in a house. You walk in the room, you flip it on, the lights are on until you leave, and then you flip it off. And that, and that one's a really good one to use with Makey Makey, that particular one. Uh, because mm -hmm. it shows how you can have makey makey always going on so it's kind of a good one for creating an alarm so this you would just hook up mm -hmm. earth and space and put that and i'm saying that because someone asked specifically right in the chat right then uh how they would use it with makey makey so uh we actually have that i believe in the yeah just the way the led is on it would make 
the sound effects go on. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, in on the Makey Makey. And I, th I have that particular um, same, that same one I did with uh, that. And I did the paperclip one to discuss the difference between a momentary and non-momentary button. So like one that's mm -hmm. always on, like a light switch, off and on. And one that you would push, like the keyboard button, that's only on when you push it. So, yep. <clears throat> I have that. Oh, I was trying to say in a tinkering with circuits guide. I'll uh, I'll share that. There's oh. a yeah. There's your paper clip. I yes. used uh, I used those brass fasteners in the paper clip, but this is cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to stay with like the same office supplies. So if you went and bought a bag or a box of you know forty binder clips and paper clips and so on, you kind of could use the same ones over and over again. So this one very simple. It's a momentary. So this would be kind of like a keyboard key, a remote control key. Um, when you push it down, it's on. And then as soon as you release, it's off. So this is nice for Makey Makey too, because if you're playing a game and you want your guy to go left, right, any of the directionals, you don't want those to be toggle switches like before. You want them to be momentary. So you can push something to have the guy go up, the character go up, left, right, whatever it might be. And this is how this one works. And I'll hook this one up. For those non-believers, hopefully it works now. <laughs> right. Michael, can you give us an idea of what age range, uh, well, you, you've you worked with that uh, has the kids engaged with this? And then, like, what's the range? You know, so I taught third grade up until recently. And um, I did it with my third graders, and they loved it. And then I went to Pete and C, which is a Pennsylvania-centric tech conference. And uh, met somebody there that said he uses this with his first graders and has for years. Um, he doesn't have them take apart the LED lights, but uh, in the way he operates is it's like a special. So every first grader does it. It's not just kind of a, you know, the, the um, gifted program or an after school program. And he said there are no issues with it. The only issues he finds are some of the kids have trouble kind of with the fine motor skills with the binder clip, but they pick up on that. And then they're fine with it. So as far as like the basement age, first graders seem to love it. And I've even had junior high and high school kids that love it because I think, and this is something Jay Silver talks a lot about. I think it's that important invention literacy part that just needs to be taught at any age. So if you're teaching at a first grade, that's great. But if you're in eighth, ninth grade, 10th grade, and you haven't kind of learned how a circuit works and how to control a circuit, um, it's still a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, yeah we show us the, the one you were about to show us too. You can oh. show and talk at the same time because uh, <laughs> what's really cool is that you're, you're, yeah, there you go. There's your momentary. But what's yeah, cool about this is- My down there too. Yeah, we're starting really simple, uh, but also you can see all the wires, right? So we have the, the wires going on and we're showing kids we don't have to be afraid of electricity and wires and they're still playing and uh I, I do like that some of the teachers are saying they still make the kids wear their safety goggles i always make kids wear safety goggles during take apart because who knows what's gonna fly during a take apart mm -hmm. but um this is really like these are simple concepts and i did this with some i think it was fourth graders uh locally here when i was getting them to make a, a giant stair piano but you can also get really complex. So Luis Morgan is here in chat. And I'm sure you, you know Luis because she's a big fan of Scrappy Circuits. She uses them in her classroom. And last year, there was a time when she had asked if anyone could think of a way to do like a ball scoring. So I found my video of that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it in the chat. And I'll share it in our blog post eventually about this. I was looking for it this morning, the actual one, because I just put it away. Like I, I usually keep a lot of my maker trophies out. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I keep them kind of out nearby. And uh, I had finally just put it away. It's almost like a whole year later. But so, so we saw the LED, the battery power, the momentary switch, oh, no, uh, and that one. Yeah, we need one more to see. I made a so knife last... switch. Huh, I'm sorry. I made a knife switch like Frankenstein. Uh huh. Yeah, that I was love... a difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all, I'm all into the theatrics. And I remember ma making like a fake one of those when I was a kid just to, you know, pretend I was uh, creating Frankenstein's monster. And... Yeah. Yeah. So, so show us the other one you have. 
there. All right. So the other one is, this is probably the hardest. So my, uh, my friend that makes them with first graders, they skip this switch. So okay. this switch is using the shell of the mm -hmm. LED tea light. And what you do is you put some tin foil on about half of it. So you can see mm -hmm. about half of it is covered and half of it is not. And that's applied with just some glue stick, just cover it in glue and fold the tin foil over. And then on the brick itself, one side has tin foil and the other side is tin foil. Mm -hmm. And the idea is I kind of nickname this one the salt and pepper shaker sometimes because you spin the lid to bridge the connection. So when you have it like this and the tin foil goes from one side, the tin foil on the dial, I should say, goes from yeah. this side to this side, then it's on. And if you spin it to where at least one side breaks mm -hmm. and it doesn't connect to the tin foil, then it's off. Yeah. So it's like so a on off. You would just kind of give it like a cool. little half spin to turn it on and off. So that paper cool. clip is just holding the plastic on. Yeah. Exactly. So that one doesn't have to be conductive. And there are a lot of people that have been fooled with uh, dollar store paper clips because sometimes they are not conductive. They're right. what they're made out of, but like a weird plastic. Um, so this is one that yeah. you don't have to find an actual metal paper clip for because it's not really conducting any electricity. It's just performing. Well, a little and so yeah, on and then if I'll spin it. It's off and then I spin it back. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. I'm gonna, I have a, let me see. This reminds me of something. Ah! I, I can't find my book. Uh, so when Aaron and I wrote the Makey Makey book, he came up with the coolest, we made an Etch-a-Sketch project uh, where you're spinning dials and we use milk lids. And it's similar to that, but it's a little different. Uh, so I was trying to find the uh, the book to just show you the diagrams, but in I'll I'll look for that tweet too. I have a tweet of that. Those are really have cool. It over there. Oh, you have the book? Yeah, I'm looking at it right <laughs> you now. Can it. They're like, oh, uh, the, yeah. There's the uh, the milk bottle lid thing is really was really a cool concept. We use bare conductive paint on the undersides. So uh, and I actually have that at a sketch project somewhere. I could pull out. The funny thing is too, if you when you save all your um, trash. <laughs> your trash circuits like that your kids will draw on them so like uh it's got it's got like you know so and so was here on it because mm -hmm. that's how they are uh but the i think that the actual pin in the the that was our earth so like what you did there we actually oh, used okay. that as earth the um the, so the, this that pin part. In the middle oh okay. yeah uh it was a screw though so it was a screw and it had like a nut all the way down. And so on the in, on the inside of the Etch-a-Sketch, you could actually see uh, that's where we hooked earth or ground uh, to to ground the circuit. And then the and then it would turn and, and touch the bare conductive paint, which was where we had the right and left for drawing the Etch-a-Sketch. So very cool. Yeah, it's one of my favorite projects that it was like. It's cool to make things with other people because then you use both your combined knowledge to come up with some idea. So yeah, that one was, that one was Aaron made the circuit really cool. And then I did the processing sketch. So sometimes that, I guess I did the, the thing I always say, like where we like to talk about, uh, I always have one kid as the hardware kid and one kid as the software kid. And so you could do that even at home. Like one of your kids might be better at building hardware and one kid might be more into coding with scratch. So it's pretty fun. How many scrappy circuits are there, Michael? How many have you designed? So there's, there's kind of two platforms right now for scrappy circuits. There's a website, scrappycircuits.com. And I can't remember the final number, but there's the five core bricks. And then there's maybe like seven. What I think on the website I'm calling, I called other bricks. But mm -hmm. I'm also working on a book that'll be out this summer. And, cool. and in that one, there's a lot more. And everything yeah. that's on there will be on the website. It's just, I've kind of been working on the book. And once the book is finalized, it'll just be copy and pasted. So a lot of the content will be on the website for free, which is really nice. I'm, I'm working with Sylvia Martinez, who uh, is wonderful. And she, it was like something we kind of came up with that we both were, it was really important to us to make a lot of the core content 
free online. Um, and then the book would be there for people that wanted to really jump in and find some more cool stuff out. Oh, awesome. So you're doing it through constructing modern knowledge. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, very cool. So uh, everyone, we only have five minutes left. Well, oh. we, everything that you've shown us can base, except for the battery, uh, can be used with Makey Makey because that's not enough power to power a, a Makey Makey. I did actually hack a AA battery. I saw it on Instructables and powered my Makey Makey with that. Okay. Uh, I was really surprised that worked. I can't remember if it works with the newest model, uh, but it, but the other, all the switches that you've created are great ideas for kind of getting kids to build more interesting projects. So draw um, three other scrappy circuit switches that work perfectly with the Makey Makey. If you want me to show those real quick. Oh yes, please do. And okay. also, we have some questions. Someone asked, "What happens if you power the LED with two batteries?" You'll have to find out. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, you're gonna blow out your LED. Yeah. So <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah, so what's this one? Solo cup. So just like uh -huh. a, you dig through your pantry, hopefully you can find one. Cut it like right about here. And then I kind of fan it out. I call it uh, so nice. Cut little um almost like a sun. You make a sun out of it. And what's uh -huh. nice is it has it naturally sits like this. And then when you push down, you can kind of use that action as a button. That's so I fun. have some tin foil up shoved in there, just taped together. And then this bottom piece would be my ground. And this wire would be going to one of the parts of the makey makey. And then every time I kind of push, I get that, you know, trigger for my makey makey, which is nice. Yeah, that's awesome. So this one I love, and the, again, kind of fitting with the whole scrappy circuits, quarantine edition, uh, you know, stuff you can find at home. So this one is a tilt switch. So I call it the canoe tilt switch. So I have my cardboard, which I'm going to take apart a little bit real quick. And I just cut some slits on the end. So started in this shape. Yeah. Rectangle. There, there, there. Added some binder clips and some tin foil. Fold it and then tape it like that. And now, so the whole idea is one side, like this one and this one would be connected to earth. And then mm -hmm. maybe this side won't be connected to the left directional, one would be connected to the right directional. And then kind of every time I tilt it back and forth. That's awesome. You know. So you could kind of glue this in the back of a cardboard steering wheel for a driving game or something like that. And then this is another one. I know this one's on the website. This one's the magic wand. So whenever people talk about they build the core bricks for uh, scrappy circuits and they're looking for the next thing to do, I always tell them to go to the dollar store and look for, I don't think I have one, but a window alarm. They're about a dollar each. And most... Um, most dollar stores or the equivalent have them. And what they are is they're a little piezo buzzer that's hooked up to a battery and has a magnetic read switch. So the whole idea is you, you know, you um, adhere it to your window. And then when somebody opens your window, it goes off. But you can find a lot of great parts in there. You can use the piezo buzzer as like a buzzer. So if you're making an arcade game, you shoot the ball, it goes in, it buzzes. And then you can also use the magnet that triggers the magnetic read switch for this. So really simple. This is a paper clip just wrapped in some aluminum foil mm -hmm. and then another paper clip above it. And then I found a stick yesterday before it rains. <laughs> magnet to the end of it. Oh, nice. And the whole idea is you would connect one side to a button for Makey Makey, one side to earth. And then when you hover over that area, it pulls the paper clip together with this paper clip, the paper clip covered in aluminum foil to this one, and then it completes the connection. Oh. Nice. So this is another That's fun cool. one. So yeah, so those are three scrappy circuits bricks that I think work perfectly for makey makey and could be a lot of fun. What's nice about this one too, is it can work with something over it. So you can put this underneath a piece of paper that says uh... like, you know, um, I don't know like find the, find the blue hat. And when you put the magnet over the blue hat, it'll complete underneath the paper and add a nice layer of magic to everything. I love it. 
I forgot I brought some of my own scrappy circuits with me to to share. This is a when Aaron and I were working on Aaron and I've been working on DIY sensors for Makey Makey for like years. <laughs> and I just some of them are out and some of them aren't. And this one I think I finally published as the ultimate stomping pad last year, but it's similar to just the button switch. The difference only to the pressure switch is that the insulators are rubber bands. So if you can see that those are rubber bands. So now uh, when you jump on this, the rubber band at least should allow for it to spring back, right? And then you, you can you can actually jump on these stomping pads. Uh, oh yes, Aaron is my co-author in life. I also we also made this is one of my favorite ones that's never really come out that I did share at ISTE last year, uh, and this is this can be an accelerometer. So mm -hmm. this is a tilt switch, and each of those can be a different connection and you can actually measure how fast I'm going with you plug it up to scratch and code it. Uh, and then we did have someone ask, we're kind of running a little over time, but we did have someone ask like what happens when I plug scrappy circuits into my computer? Well, you're not really plugging the circuits into your computer, you're plugging the circuits into Makey Makey and you're plugging Makey Makey in your computer and it's just gonna work the same way as if I'd put any other random thing like bananas, uh, it doesn't send anything to the computer other than the signal that a key has been pressed. So just wanted to clarify that. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't try. I don't know how, how else you would put them to your computer, but it was an interesting question someone asked in, in the chat. But we're running over time. This yeah. was a good, fast show. So uh, we shared your site here, and we're going to share it again in the, um, in the blog post that goes up with the video. And thanks, everybody, for coming from all over the world. Yes. Uh, Jason, no, there's no video or instructable for that. We're still trying to get, I'm still trying to figure out where to put that. Uh, that sensor is, is just like, it's probably crazy. I even showed it on the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those things where, you know, you've made it like years ago and you want people to see it and, and figure out, Oh, before we go, I, have you seen these, Michael? Um, Bear Conductive makes these printed sensors. So you oh, can no. actually buy these from Bear Conductive and all of this is conductive and you can cut these. Uh, they're, they're pretty cheap too. So they're screen okay. printed uh, and you can cut it to whatever shape. And um, with their board, you can actually apparently like hover your hand and make this turn off and on. It has like a, enough of a reading, a capacitive reading for that. But anyway, cool. their board does. So you can use these with Makey Makey too and they're kind of fun. So thanks everybody. And thanks, Michael, for your time today. And oh, everybody go out and get your tea lights and you can start yes. building circuits at home. Uh, oh, cute. <laughs> I know when you said you were going to bring your you daughter's circuits. Head. I like that. I should have done this bring, the whole time. Yeah. Did you bring your daughter's circuits? You were supposed to bring your daughter's yes. circuits with you. This There's is, one. Yes. She's in kindergarten. So the mustache orientation, that's more of like a first grade, second grade skill. So mustache that's, upside down. That's pretty important right there. <laughs> yeah. Like that shows how fun it is if we're all at home and we need some fun. So hack your tea lights. Uh, I made that video yesterday and now I realize you probably have one on your site. I, it was the only thing I could think of to steal a LED from. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you you can order them in bulk, you can, I don't know if you want to go to the, I don't know if the dollar store is an essential service, if it would actually be open. I guess it has groceries. It Sometimes, might be. yeah, they have groceries. Yeah, but we thank all of you. Uh, ravage your drawers for cardboard and tin foil, and we'll see you making next, next Tuesday. Yes. Uh -huh. next, next week, we have a special guest from Denmark. Ooh. Ooh. So Very nice. Well, I know. So thank you so much, Michael, for coming today. Thank yeah. you, Michael. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thanks. And goodbye, everybody. That was a Lego hint, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. See you. Bye.